Another set of ham is kush. Kush is literally, the word kush is literally synonymous with Ethiopia. Wherever you read kush or Ethiopia in the Bible, they are translating the same exact Hebrew word, which is pronounced kush. I'm not sure why they sometimes say Ethiopia and why sometimes they say kush, because it's literally the same Hebrew word. It means black. Ethiopia in Greek means land of the burnt face or skin. This is an ancient picture of an Ethiopian as rendered by the Egyptians. Here again is the land of Kush. Um, it's the northeastern corner of Africa, but it went um, a lot further south, as a matter of fact. And in fact, I have found a number of very old sources that lead me to wonder if Ethiopia refers to the majority of the continent of Africa and not just the northeastern nation, especially what we know now, Ethiopia, their borders have been shrunken so much because of European colonization. Uh, and the reason I think that, again, hard for you guys to see, but when we put it up online, you'll be able to see it in greater detail. Here is a map that um, is dated sometime between 1557 and 1771. On the map itself, it says 1557, but some people at U.S., some researchers, they say it couldn't have been in 1557. Anyway, it's old. And it's a map of Africa, and it says Ethiopia all over it. There's Lower Ethiopia, there's Upper Ethiopia, um, the whole continent pretty much, as, uh, certainly everything below the Sahara is referred to as Ethiopia. Okay. And here is another one, dated 1683, and Ethiopia again appears over the entire continent of Africa, and the ocean itself is referred to as the Ethiopian Ocean. And I found many maps from the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, where the Atlantic and sometimes, you know, uh, that southern, whatever the southern ocean right at the tip of Africa, is called the Ethiopian Ocean. So look it up on your own. But I think it's interesting because we know the first King James Bible was published when? 1611. And it says Ethiopia. Were they referring to a nation, Ethiopia? Or were they referring to the entire continent? I don't know. It's just something to think about. And when you're reading scriptures, try and see which are they referring to. Ethiopia may be a lot more than uh, we realize. Okay. I think it's important to talk about Kush or Ethiopia's lin lineage. In Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10, it says, Kush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one of the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yah, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Let me pause here because I don't know who's listening online. Here at Yasharun, we do use the name of the Most High. So in the scriptures where you see Lord, we put back the name that was taken out and we actually use his name. So we'll say Yahuwah or we'll say Yah for short. All right. And then just continue on in Genesis chapter 10. It says, from that he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ir, Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala. That is the principal city. We see here a descendant of Cush, the Ethiopians, going out and establishing all of these cities. It's a major um, emperor, if you want to think of it that way. And let me just point out a few of these words. Babel is just another word for Babylon. So Nimrod actually established the city we call um, Babylon. He also established Assyria and Nineveh. And we're going to see um, a picture of Nineveh very soon. Akkad is the root language of ancient Babylon and Assyria. Akkadian. And the prophet Micah later uses the same Nimrod to describe the region of Assyria. So I, I want you to make connections when you're reading the word. When you see Babylon, think Nimrod, a black man. When you see Assyria, think Nimrod, a black man. Even when you see Nineveh, think Nimrod, a black man. Okay? I want you to get out of this Middle Eastern idea. 
these places, though they are now called the Middle East and occupied by different people, understand that they were established by black people. Okay? Um, another thing, even the, even the um, scholars say that Babylon was the first time in history that humankind channeled its energies towards addressing the needs of the community as a whole. In other words, this is the first time you see cities emerging and empires emerging and people working together to irrigate the land and really do grand scale um, agriculture. So after the flood, uh, Ham's descendants were kind of like really doing some stuff, all right? Can I say that in assembly doing some stuff? All right. <laughs> Here is an artist's depiction of ancient Babylon. This was actually at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, so it was, you know, well after Nimrod established it. But you see, um, it, it's quite a grand uh, city. This is another uh, depiction of Nineveh. Again, I mean, it almost looks like a modern city. I mean, some of the, the buildings you see, like, I don't know, Supreme Court of the United States or something like that. It's, it's very grand. So this is, you know, these are the cities that Nimrod um, established. Here's Kala, which, you know, until I did the study I hadn't heard of. Again, just absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me a bit of Egyptian um, architecture, very decorative. And here are some depictions of Nimrod himself. I always say his beard looks like he has Senegalese twists in it. Um, in some other places, it might, it might look like locks, but um, again, things that we do quite well with our hair. Now, let's talk about um, some other notable descendants of Ham that appear in scripture. This is the Ethiopian king, Taharka, and I'll just briefly mention Taharka um, is mentioned in scripture as coming to the aid of the kingdom of Judah. When Judah was going to be attacked by Assyria, Taharqa went up there with his army and actually uh, defended Judah. And so Ethiopia was a friend of Judah and obviously very mighty because they had an army and chariots and all of that that they could come up and um, help Judah with. Uh, history does record Taharqa as being a great warrior he also reigned not only in Ethiopia, but he reigned in Egypt as well. Under him, the two kingdoms were unified. So it's sad that, at least in, I don't know if the, the young ones today learn about people like that, but I certainly know that when I was growing up, I had never heard of Taharqa, didn't know who he was, but for somebody to be reigning over Egypt and Ethiopia and having chariots at <laughs> this time, um, he, he's a notable um, person that we should become more familiar with. Another uh, notable Ethiopian is Eben Melech, who is mentioned in Jeremiah 38. This is when Jeremiah, poor thing, he was speaking the truth, and as usual, folks didn't like to hear it, so he was thrown down to the bottom of a cistern. And Eben Melech was the one who devised a plan to, uh, you know, tie up clock together and rescue Jeremiah and pulled him up from that cistern. But what's pretty cool is if you read Jeremiah 38 verse 7, it says Evan Melech was an official in the royal palace. So um, his name literally means servant of the king, but we know he was an official. So think of him as, you know, I don't know, secretary of state or maybe a cabinet member or somebody who actually held office within the kingdom of Judah. And he obviously had a um, kind heart towards the prophet of the Most High. And then, this isn't conclusive, but the prophet Zephaniah, in Zephaniah uh, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The word of Yah which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushi. Well, uh, we've heard that word before, Cush. And Cushi means their blackness, or my blackness. So I'm just wondering, because, you know, we all know that he, in Hebrew, the words in the Bible all, or the names in the Bible all meant something. They didn't just name, you know, like my name, to me. I'm sure it has a name somewhere, or a meaning somewhere, but all their names meant something. So here his meant my blackness. So it leads me to uh, believe he may have been perhaps particularly dark. Okay, so we talked about Ham. 
doing great things, establishing empires, ruling cities, commanding armies. Yay, Ham, okay? And like I said, nobody uh, disputes that Ham was black. All right, moving.